Hello and welcome to another video. Um, today is going going to be a game review, and the game review is going to be on War Thunder. Yep. Right, fanboys will be all over this. Um, okay, so War Thunder is really fun to play, but uh, it can be boring when you can't win a game and it just means it takes longer and it's often if you're not playing the Russian tanks or planes that you can't win a game because well the Russians are severely will have massive advantages for no reason for a game that claims to be realistic it seems to favour the Rus Russians a lot. Russian buyers from a Russian company. And they're, uh, they've severely nerfed the German tanks, especially the German TF3s. And that's just fucked up. They, th you want to make a realistic game? Make it realistic, not fucking biased. And yeah, there was someone commenting on a YouTube video where we're looking at War Thunder and so he wrote a poem. The guy's name is Skogs and so roses are red, candy is sweet, please buff, buff the Germans, they can't compete. They love to camp, they find it a thrill, oh Germans love it when they sit on a hill and that's all they can do. So yeah, and it's all they can do. They, they can't do anything else because they don't have the firepower necessary to penetrate the Russian armor because Russian bias. Uh, but that said, there is a lot. There is a quick matchmaking. Uh, it's never taken me more than a couple of minutes to get in a game. Where whereas in World of Tanks, I think you can be waiting for five, maybe. 10 minutes on the extreme side of things and still not get a game. But that's never happened in War Thunder. About 2 minutes max for the Avgators. But then it's poor matchmaking. The battle ra rating system is broken. And from what I understand, the battle rating rates vehicles on the how well or poorly players are doing in those vehicles. So if, let's say, a really good tank or plane, there's a really good tank or plane and players are getting it and doing really poorly in it because they don't know how to drive or fly it, that brings the battle rating down, which means you've then got easier fights and it just doesn't work then if people are doing really well in a bad vehicle they get to a they get such good battle rating those vehicles that they're then against like if you're in a play in battle jets all the time when you're when the vehicle might not necessarily be a jet and it's just broken and they need to fix it and they've known they, they've known they need to fix it for god knows how long now but yeah uh there are a lot of decal decals to decorate the vehicles with which you get from completing missions and challenges and the only thing I, the only complaint I have about this is that, um, the, uh, the challenges and the missions are the same. They're all, they're always destroy ground vehicles, destroy air vehicles, uh, and bomb ground targets, and those are the missions, and it's 
not, it doesn't have that wide of a variety. The only way they've tried to stop you getting all the vehicle, all the decals at once, uh, is by obviously setting up those boundaries by between air and ground vehicles, and also just making it so certain nations, um. Certain nations <coughs> have, you know, only certain only vehicles of certain nations can unlock those decals. Um, but yeah, there's the, there's no British or Japanese tank lines. That's just a waste. There's they're just missing so many great tanks, such as the Sherman Firefly, the Sherman 3, the Grant, the Churchill, the Matilda 1, and it's just a waste. I can't remember any of the Japanese tanks off the top of my head, but it's just a waste of what could have been the one of the best games of its time. And it's really not. And that's not all down to the British and Japanese tanks being missing, but it's quite important. But anyway, it's not dependent on not dependent on a premium account like the wargaming games tended to be. Um and you don't have to have a premium account to be able to get premium vehicles. In fact, it gifts you one right at the start. And so, yeah. And it gives you gold and everything. But, yeah. the There's also skins for vehicles that you can get and unlock by completing challenges, but... There's not a variety in those challenges at all. There are lots of vehicles to research and lots of things in said vehicles to research. The game modes that are there are good fun. Sadly, there's not many game modes. There's, I think, three or four. And so, yeah. There are lots of maps, though. Um, and I mean three or four game modes for each vehicle. Like, if you're going on the ground vehicles, the tanks and stuff, that's three or four game modes for there. The uh, planes, I think there's actually only two vehicles there. No, there's not two vehicles. Two game modes there. So, yeah, there's not a lot. But there are lots of maps. Some you're more likely to be playing on than others because it seems to want to put you on those maps over and over and over again. There are there's poor handling in tank arcade battles, like much worse than World of Tanks, and that gets criticised for it. But the tanks feel like they're Formula One cars or are a or on an ice rink, unless you've got a slightly heavier tank. The same problem doesn't doesn't apply to the realistic and simulator battles, but they need to fix those broken physics in the arcade battles, because it's what the majority of people play. And so, yeah, in arcade battles, tanks can't do over 30... 5 kilometers an hour without starting to fly whenever they come to the slightest mound of just dirt and stuff and that's just another example of broken physics and it shouldn't be there and I'm not sure why it is still there. If it's so realistic then they should fix it but no. Then it and then there's the uh, fact that it's not really free to play. It says it's a free to play game, but it forces you to pay money for a joystick if you want to 
play anything more than arcade battles in the aircraft. Uh, it seems to be limited a bit the amount of game modes at the moment. Hopefully they'll fix that, but you know, it's Gaijin, they probably won't. Gaijin refuse to attempt to to even attempt to prevent the the cheating that's going on because of their stupid setting to do with low foliage and they're trying to make it make their game more playable for uh, computers that can't run War Thunder at the moment because they're turning off the adding an option for low detail and stuff foliage but they're still not taking away the option to turn off foliage at all and so it's people people can see each other from across the map when they shouldn't be able to and Gaijin just refuse to attempt to prevent it and they're just it doesn't make any sense and it's yeah it's fucked up but anyway yeah it's time for the final verdict on this game and it is fun but until they've fixed most of the game it uh, it only gets a 7 out of 10 it's just the aircraft are good, the tanks are shit. They've, they've just broken the tanks and until they fix it, it's got a 7 out of 10. Uh, on the planes, it probably would have got a 9 out of 10. Tanks, not a chance. Uh, but yeah, that's all for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed and as always, 